So when you have two sample tests for independent samples, these are the steps that we need to follow. If population standard deviations are given to us, we're going to use z-test, these steps here. However, if sigma 1 and sigma 2 are missing, we're going to use a t-test. If the population variances are equal to each other, you're going to use the degrees of freedom as n1 plus n2 minus 2, but if the population variances are not equal to each other, you're going to select degrees of freedom, which is the smallest of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1. Let's take a look at these two examples next to each other. So the very first one is pet food, which has population variances are not equal. And the second one is transactions, which says the population variances are equal to each other. So the difference between these two gives us different formulas to follow. The very first one says, a pet association claims that the mean annual costs of food for dogs and cats are the same, they are equal to each other. The results for samples of two types of pets are shown at the left-hand side. For dogs, the average is 239, with standard deviation 32, and sample size is 16. For cats, it's 203, with standard deviation 21, and sample size 18. At 10% level of significance, can you reject the pet association claims? Assume population variances are not equal to each other. They are not equal to each other, so the degrees of freedom must be the smaller of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1. So first of all, since the claim says they are equal to each other, it means that your null hypothesis is the claim. Mu1 is equal to mu2. You can easily create the alternative, which is mu1 is not the same as mu2. Since the population variances are not equal to each other, it means that the degrees of freedom is the smaller of n1 minus 1, n2 minus 1. n1 is 16, 16 minus 1 is 15, n2 is 18, 18 minus 1 is 17. So between 15 and 17, 15 is smaller. Now, since you have two tail tests and your alpha is 10%, 10% divided by 2, 5%. The critical value for 5% area is 1.753 and negative 1.753. So the rejection regions are on the left and right side of these two numbers. Now we need to move on and calculate the critical, I'm sorry, the standardized test of test, which is T equals to x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 divided by the standard error. x1 bar is 239 minus x2 bar 203 minus the difference between population means is 0 divided by square root of s1 is 32 raised to second over 16 plus s2 which is 21 to the second divided by 18. This number is about 3.83 and this is more than 1.753. It means that this lands in the rejection region. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to reject the claim. When you reject the claim, it means that you support the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to say that there is enough evidence at 10% level of significance to reject the claim that the mean annual costs are the same. So again, this formula is for uh, the case that population variances are not equal to each other. If the question says population variances are equal, the formula that you're going to follow is a little bit different. Here you have a pooled sample. So transactions. A magazine claims that the mean amount spent by a customer at Burger Stop is greater than the mean amount spent by a customer at Fry World. The results for samples of customers enter. 
transactions for two fast food restaurants are shown at the left hand side. So X1 bar, the first average is $5.46 with standard deviation 0.89 and the sample size 22. The second average is 5.12 with standard deviation 0.79 and sample size 30. Well, first of all, what is the claim? The claim is that the, uh, the mean amount spent by customer at Five Ward and Burger Stop are different from each other. It says the first one, the average is more than the average for the second one. So the, this is the claim, alternative Python hypothesis. Mu1 is more than Mu2. It's opposite. Mu1 is less than equals to Mu2. So first of all, you have a right tail test, right? And since the population variances are equal to each other, the degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2. n1, 22, plus 30, minus 2 is 50. This is the degrees of freedom. Since you have 5% level of significance, t sub 0 or the critical value is 1.676. Remember that the degrees of freedom that you're going to use is 50. So for the right tail test, T is more than 1.676 if you decide to reject the null hypothesis. But we need to calculate T. In the next step, we're going to calculate T following X1 bar minus X2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 divided by the error, which is square root of N1 minus 1 to the second plus n2 minus 1, s2 to the second divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 multiplied by square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. After doing the substitution, this number is 1.45. Since 1.45 is not more than 1.676, you say that, hey, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. It means that we support the null hypothesis, so we reject the claim. Now let us take a look at our calculators. Let me share the screen. So for the first example, you're going to go to stat and go to tests and find two sample t-test, everybody. In the statistics, the first sample mean is 239. Standard deviation is 32, sample size is 16. For the second sample, mean is 203, standard deviation is 21 with size 18. And since it's a two tail test, mu1 is not the same as mu2. It's not a pooled sample, you have independent samples. And then go to calculate. And when you go to calculate, the p-value has e to power negative 4. It means that your p-value is very small. So since p-value is very, very small, it definitely is less than 10%. Since p-value is less than 10%, we reject the null hypothesis. Since we reject the null hypothesis, it means that we are rejecting the claim. Again, it doesn't matter if you use rejection region or p-value. The result must be the same. For the second question, we're going to go to stat and then go to calc and then tests and find two sample t-tests. Now, since we are using statistics, x1 bar is 5.46 with standard deviation 0.89. It's sample size 22. The second mean is 5.12. With standard deviation 0.79. With size 30. Here we have a right tail test. So you're going to select more than mu2. Mu1 is more than mu2. It's not a pulled sample. So Let us go to the calculate. And as you can see, your p-value is 8%. P-value is more than 5%. Since 8%, 8 
is more than 5%, they fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the results must be the same.